Recently, we were fortunate to have our friends from Captivate Talent join us to provide insight in how to crush the video interview. Alumna Carolyn Estelle, who's the Director of Executive Search, and her colleague Christopher Gannon, Founder and Principal, provided their insights. Captivate Talent is a talent solutions consultancy that focuses on placing top revenue professionals at growth stage technology organizations. Please keep in mind that this was pre-recorded, so you will be unable to submit questions. So a little bit of an overview of what we'll cover, and some of this might be obvious and some of it um, may not be, but I think it's all worth saying. Um, we're gonna cover the prep beforehand, the actual interview, the follow-up, and, and just any questions that you guys have. Carolyn, would you like them to put questions in the chat or would you like them to just ask I'd them more? Okay. I would love that. Just because I'm in the driver's seat on my PowerPoint, I'll probably just have Chris field the questions. Yep. But so everybody throw out those questions. Yeah, this, this, is, your, this is your time. So I, I wanna cover things that are on your mind. This is just a, a format for, for what I thought would be helpful. So I think it's really important the week before your presentation to really do deep research on the company. That means combing through LinkedIn, trying to find the person that is interviewing you on LinkedIn, looking for different blog posts, different articles that they have, may have written or shared. Those are all gonna be talking points for you. Um, the more that you can read about the website and key people, the more prepared you're going to feel going into this. In terms of your LinkedIn, LinkedIn is really the new resume. So every, everything that you're putting into your resume should be reflected in your LinkedIn. It should be a nice, clean picture of you. Any social media should be on private. Hires, people that are hiring are definitely doing research beforehand and, and doing some Google searching. You just wanna make sure that you're in the most positive light possible. In terms of attire, right, like as Chris was saying, this is the new world order, right? Like never did I ever think I'd be presenting to Fairfield University in, in my bedroom, but this, this is how we're living these days. I wouldn't leave anything to chance. A company like Gartner would still expect you to probably put on a tie. I wouldn't leave it to chance, especially if it's for a more corporate role. If it's for a startup, I think a button down shirt or a nice sweater like I'm wearing today is completely acceptable. You really want to play to your audience. Chris, do you want to comment? Yeah. And make sure when, in terms of doing your homework, as much as you're prepping your own LinkedIn, make sure you're diving deep into the profiles of the people that you're meeting to um, beyond just their last few jobs and where they went to school, especially now people that were not active on LinkedIn are more active than ever. So if you go into their activity, which you can see if you're a second degree connection, um, you could see what they're posting about. You can see the conversations they're having and you can see how they're interacting with their peer groups on LinkedIn. So it's really good things to prep for and things to bring up in an interview if you need conversation topics. I think, again, to Chris's point, people are more and more living and breathing on LinkedIn. We're seeing such an uptick in what people are sharing. It's becoming like a Facebook in some ways for the professional community. So the more that you can do a deep dive, the more prepared you're going to be. And we've covered a lot of this already. I think it's important to test your lighting and see how you're looking on camera, making sure that obviously it's it's eye contact looking into the camera. It's not quite the same. You're gonna have to work harder to be more engaging. You should be exhausted by the end of this interview just from working to get your point across. Any kind of software updates, like for me today, I knew I was gonna be on this video. I did a good restart on my computer this morning. I updated everything so there was no problems. I logged in early to make sure that there was no glitches. 
any kind of chats like you saw in Austin's video, super distracting, put everything on silence. And this is the one situation where I would say typing out notes furiously on your keyboard isn't going to be a good look. This is where you're gonna have to go old school and pull out a notebook and jot things down. And I think to that point, you should be prepared with at least three to four good questions on the company and the role and the person that you're meeting with. And it's okay to have those prepared. I think it shows that you put in the work and you really want this job. And one that's sometimes overlooked too that we see, make sure your family knows. I mean, everyone's home probably with people that they're not normally with during their work day. I mean, I, I literally just texted my, my dad, said, hey, can you grab the dog and throw him in your office right now? Cause he's being a little bit of a pain. So make sure your family's aware that, hey, I have an interview right now. Um, so you don't have somebody, you know, walking in and, you know, trying to give you lunch or something like that, as nice as it might be. Any questions here before we move on? Yeah, I just threw one in the chat, but um, if you're having tech problems with your laptops, could you use a phone or is that not a good idea? If you're having tech problems, use your phone um, because using a phone's better than having like a, a tech problem. But I would say a laptop is super preferable, especially if you're having any sort of group interview, if there's more than one person on that, it's kind of hard to see them both. You have to swipe back and forth through the screen on your phone lots of the times mm -hmm. if it's Zoom. Um, and then depending on the software, if it's like a WebEx, it might be harder for your phone. You know, there, there's more chances of the software not working. So laptop is always preferred. Um, but if you need the phone, almost set it up like your laptop, then have it like on a stand or something. Don't be holding it, moving around. Like, Put it against something and keep it very, very stable because even a little bit of a movement super, super distracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the phone, you should have the phone prepped as your backup plan if it just completely goes wrong. I feel like for the most part, companies are using Zoom, WebEx. I, I don't know what other big companies might be using, but they're definitely more integrated for a laptop than a phone experience, but have it on standby. How about the positioning of the laptop in terms of having it propped up a little bit versus? Yeah, I have my laptop on a stand that's kind of up and angled towards me. Today, I'm lucky because it's bright out. I have my curtains pulled all the way so you can see well. But I mean, don't be afraid to go on camera and play with the lighting if it's not such a good day. Like sometimes I'll sit here if it's dark and I'll prop my laptop up. The, the really awkward move is the coffee table that's usually a little lower. And then, you know, you have somebody and you're looking like <laughs> kind of up their nose and at the bottom like of their chin. It's <laughs> yeah, su is super awkward. So if you have that set up for some reason, just put it on a few books or something like that. Yeah, angle and lighting is really important. And don't be afraid to play around with it early to see how you look. People do cheat. I mean, lots of people that you see posting videos and stuff online and these like LinkedIn celebrities, they always have like lights behind them and they always have like a super nice camera. So it, most of us don't have that at home. So just use it to the best of your advantage. You make sure there's good lighting. Any other questions? No? Okay. So this is more specific to the actual interview, not as much video interviewing. And again, let's keep this conversation as free flowing as possible. But I think now more than ever, employers are looking for people that are adaptable, that are genuine, hard working, people that have humility and are willing to do what it takes to succeed. And I think adaptability is going to be probably the most critical thing that you can convey in these interviews. Chris and I are adapting. Every, every company at this point is adapting to what, um, what companies will do moving forward. So I think being able to convey that from internship experience, from projects and things that you've championed on campus, um, being flexible and being driven will go a really long way. And I think 
we've all we've all done our homework at this point, right? And I know that you're all smart because you're stags. I think coming across smart is just doing your prep work, anticipating the questions, and having clear and concise answers. I like to answer in threes. I think it makes me sound smart. So if they say describe yourself, determine, passionate, and smart. You can mix in anything else you want, but I think that that's just a, a, a nice one. Chris, do you want to care to add anything? Yeah, for, for me, the, the biggest thing that I think of right now, because we're, we're kind of looking, keeping our eye on the market to hire people for us too internally is hardworking. Like the, the level of trust is at an all time high and it's the most important thing. Like, can I trust you? at home to make sure that the salary I pay you, I'm getting my money's worth out of that. And that's kind of a, that's a way that employers look at anybody that they hire. So like, can I make sure that you're the hardworking type of individual that I know, you know, after our morning meeting, you're not flipping on like Xbox or getting on Instagram and just chatting to your friends. Um, are you getting the work done in the hours that I need you to get them done? Any questions in the chat, throw them in. Nothing? Okay. So these are your generic interview questions that you can plan on hearing, right? Why would you wanna work for us? Describe your strengths and weaknesses. Who do you look up to? And you can prep these however you want to, but just some suggestions just around why would you want to work for us, right? Um, it's, it's really around the research that you've done, right? So everything that I could read, I, you know, I love your company because of the mix of high, hard working, high integrity, driven, winning mentality. If you could even pull quotes from the website, I think that's helpful. Um, in terms of strengths and weaknesses, again, going back to this, like people hire people that they want to sit next to every day um, and people that they trust. So I think be authentic, but also convey that you are someone that you can trust. In terms of weakness, I think it's okay to call out the obvious, which is you don't bring a lot of experience to the table, right? Like that's, that's obvious and it's okay to call that out. Um, so long as you're conveying that you're willing to do what it takes. And I think that brings me to the point that I bolded, right? Um, what I want to do and what I will do are probably different. I will do almost anything to get a foot in the door. If I had a choice, I love the following, right? I think that's a great way to position it. So people think, wow, they're hungry. They want this job and they're adaptable. How do you handle, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, in an interview, guys, a, a curveball question too. It's not even a, actually a curveball. It's a question I would ask to anyone that's coming out of school because I, I expect your research skills and presentation skills to be at an all-time high. Um, believe it or not, raw grads out of school actually usually do a better job than somebody with 10 years of experience understanding a company. So I'll always ask somebody to tell me about my own company. Um, and I had somebody the other day that I interviewed her. She was great. And I said, tell me a little bit about us. And she said, oh, so you guys recruit in financial services. If you go on the first page of our website, it says we recruit for revenue professionals for startups. And at that point, her interview was great. It was just a no for me. It was a hard, there was nothing she could have done at that point for the next 15 minutes of the interview that could have convinced me to follow up with her. So make sure you are, high, you are doing as much research as possible when you dive into these companies because people will ask you questions about their own company. And I think feedback, how you handle it, feedback is a gift. Feedback is nourishment for the soul. I would come with specific examples from mentors, from coaches, from your internships, where you were given really candid feedback and you took it on the chin and you turned it around really quickly. That's so critical when I'm making hires because you're coming fresh out of school, I'm going to be giving you a ton of feedback and being able to not take it personally and make it constructive and turn it around to something that employers will want to see and really appreciate how the stories prepped. 
Any questions there? Those who have interviewed, what anyone who want to share, like, what was the tough, was there like a tough question that you got asked and you didn't know how to handle or just what you thought maybe was a really bad question from the interviewer? You can call them out right now. <laughs> I just had I a, thought a tough question I had um, was just kind of like, you know, they asked me point blank, like, what are my weaknesses? Um, and I think that was kind of tough to take my weaknesses and then kind of spin them to make myself look appealing and not just not just dwell on the weaknesses, I guess. So, the, you, I mean, you, you definitely, it sounds like you were thinking about it the right way, the, the spin, like you always want to spin it. I mean, the, the funny one that we always laugh about is like, oh, sometimes I care too much <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm too dedicated to things. Um, but yeah, the, the weakness one, everyone should be prepared for because it's like, it's almost like an eye roll question when somebody asks it or in sales, it's, it's always like, sell me this pen. Um, but, you know, think of a weakness that, you know, even if you have that answer prepped a little bit that you could fluff and always turn around into a string, um, be like, I'm really passionate. And sometimes, you know, when I dive into something, I get way too focused on it and I don't see what's going on around me, but I've learned to make sure I'm paying attention to what's going on in my peripheral when I'm focusing on a project, something like that. Um, Kayla, you had a question too, I think, and there's one in the chat. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times I've just gotten one that is kind of like, um, like a feedback where it's like there was just someone more qualified than you and like there was never really anything real and I guess like I've gotten that a few times and so I feel like sometimes I never really get anything constructive what would you take away from something like that you could you know it, it's it's really tough sometimes and I mean Carolyn definitely knows this from being at Gartner, like recruiters and hiring managers, they're just, especially in this type of market, it's hard to give people personalized feedback. It's, it's mo lots of times we're really bad at actually even, you know, the recruiter ghosted me is like a big thing in our industry, or I never heard back from that company I interviewed at three times. Um, you know, we kind of see it as when somebody apply, if somebody just sends in an application they're probably not going to get a, re if they, they'll just get an automated rejection. But if you go into a company and you meet somebody two or three times, uh, it's kind of your right to ask for feedback and ask for something more specific and say like, Hey, I really enjoyed our experience. I'm, I'm obviously disappointed why it didn't work out, but what can I do to make myself better? I just want to know, like, is there anything specific? And I, like, that is something that would make me think of like, did I make the right decision as the hiring manager? If somebody's like, if somebody was a close number two, like, should I reconsider them? Um, so, you know, feel like it's okay to email somebody back and be like, can I get some more insightful feedback? I just want to improve on myself. I really appreciate your time. And yeah. connect with that person on something like LinkedIn. I, I agree with that. And I think companies like Gartner sometimes you know, they were a little cagey with putting things in writing in terms of feedback. At the lower level of hiring, I would try to pick up the phone quick and, and tell them the reasons why they were class number two. Um, but I think especially with smaller companies, to Chris's point, connect with them so they continue to think of you. You know, the, the professional world is, is very long. You never know in one to two years if you bump into that person or they have another opening and then you're on their feet and they think of you. Um, that's huge. And, and hopefully they would take the time to give you some more targeted feedback that you can turn around. Thank you. Uh, Great question. Uh, Eric asked a question in the chat, which made me laugh a little. Um, Often in, in, in engineering interviews, somebody would ask a point blank question like, what do you think of November? Uh, Eric, from a recruiting perspective, I mean, I used to have a question that I would ask people on my team, like, if you could be a color, what color would you be? And can you act it out? Um, it's kind of a joke question for me to just see how somebody would react in an adverse situation. And also, I would ask it if I felt they were a little too buttoned up and I needed them to relax a little bit to kind of get a laugh out of them. So you know, sometimes people have those questions because they're looking for a specific answer, which I don't agree with from a recruiting perspective. But if they are just asking that question to throw you off your game a little bit, or maybe just see a little bit of your personality or see how you think, um, you know, just take a swing at it. If they're, if they're looking for a right answer, I don't think that's fair. So kind of go approach a question like that with, there is no wrong answer except for not answering the question. 
creative way. Agreed. Once I was asked um, what type of cereal I would be and why on an entry level interview, right? And to Chris's point, like there's no right or wrong answer. It's just how you spin it. And I'll never forget it. I said I was um, frosted mini wheats because I have a nice exterior, but I'm whole and gritty inside. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't know what you're going to For the most part, those types of questions shouldn't be like there is only one right answer. If somebody's hinging your interview and your candidacy on a question like that, they're doing it wrong and you probably don't want to work for that person. No, no, that's, it's all for the best that you don't join there. More questions just on, on the interview portion of it. I like the, how do you handle feedback? I've never heard that one before. That's a good one. Yeah. And I think if it doesn't come up in the interview, it's always nice to work that in because it's so critical to your first job. Like you really should be looking for someone that is going to mentor you and train you and show you the way. And a big part of that is taking feedback and sometimes asking for it. Co coachability is probably the number one thing that hiring managers, at least in the sales space, look for. Um, so if they're not asking a question like that, to Carolyn's point, it means maybe they're not thinking with that type of mentality. And that should be something that you think of too. Like, is this person looking at me and they're dedicated to coaching me, upskilling me and growing me? Because if they're not, they're just looking for somebody to do busy work for them. And just in terms of follow-up, I think any professional that's blocking out 30 minutes to an hour to meet with you, they're probably expecting thoughtful thank you emails within 24 hours. I, I wouldn't even let it go 48 hours at this, at this point in time. I've gotten a lot of handwritten thank yous. Once people are back in the office, I think it's a really nice way to stand out, but I wouldn't lean on that as your thank you. It should be over email. If you don't have their contact information, okay to ask for it at the end of the interview. Or you can send it over LinkedIn. And Deirdre has the question, if you haven't heard from them in a few days, is it okay to follow up? A hundred percent. And you should think too, you make, make sure that you had that follow up within 24 hours um and it should be really sooner i mean after i interview somebody clock starts ticking um you know if it's a morning interview and it's like you know if i haven't heard something that night especially now in this climate when i know people aren't you know they don't have any real social plans outside of uh being at home like i really expect a follow-up and a thoughtful follow-up like referencing something we talked about like you know did we unpeel part back part of each other's personality like that should be something in the follow-up not just the thank you for your time today i look forward to pursuing next steps um you have a little bit more depth in that make sure you stand out yeah i think the follow-up on your candidacy you, you should be replying to the thank you note right um and be careful with putting together the thank you note if you've met with a couple different people because they will forward them to one another. Those thank you notes will automatically get forwarded and they'll say, oh, well, hopefully they're saying, oh, really, really nice to meet them, really good follow-up. So make sure the follow-up is different for each person. Yeah, they and have make to sure be whatever you write is accurate. Don't <laughs> reference something that had nothing to do with the person you're writing to. Sometimes less is more in that situation, but I think making it personal to hopefully something that you guys had a connection on will make you stand out. And we've already covered the importance of LinkedIn and connecting with the person. Um, I can't stress that enough. Any questions on follow-up or thank you? No. I got okay. a question. What's, what's sure. a good, um, 
like resource for professionalism with email, like putting it together? Is it like a simple format you should follow like words or is there some like some place you could look that would give you ideas to use so like google, address google the, email and just google it yeah, yeah so so it, it if you type like follow-up email google will give you pretty good examples right away in the top of the search strings but um you have to remember too you want to be detailed you want to be personalized but at the same time if somebody's back to back to back all day like it should be succinct and to the point um, and make sure they remember, like you want to stand out, but like if you have four paragraphs, somebody's just going to look at that and be like, Oh my God, like <laughs> I can't read all this right now. If you spent three hours with them in their team, maybe two or three paragraphs is justified. But if it's a 30 minute to an hour long interview, your email should be a paragraph, maybe something bulleted out of reasons why you're excited about the role or why you want to, why you think you're a good hire, but that's about it. Agreed. Uh, I, we I think probably, we, we could probably include a link or two in the takeaway that we're going to put together for you guys. We'll look for that. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think to Chris's point, um, we're here to help and, and we're happy to put together just a few examples. Like I, I can put together just some nice thank you notes that I've gotten in the past. I wouldn't overthink that part. I really think it's just about being genuine and really trying to just resonate with the conversation that you had. Deirdre had another question. Can you ask for the job at the end of the interview? Um, it depends who you're that. interviewing with. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love if it. You're, if you're interviewing in like sales or recruiting or anything like that, that is definitely a, a pro. Um, but it depends on like, if you're in a first round interview, maybe you just want to ask for next steps um, or just, hey, I just want to get a better understanding of what the process looks like. Can you let me know what next steps look like? I'd love to move on if you think so too. Um, but if you're in like a second or third round or they say it's a final round, 100% ask for the job. And the best way to do it is you can set up your interviewer at the beginning. Um, if they let you ask a question first, ask them what they're looking for. Say, hey, what are three things you're looking for um, in this role? And make sure you write them down. During your interview, if you can remember to highlight why you relate to those three things. And then at the end, you can really put them and back them into a corner by saying something like, well, at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned you're looking for X, Y, and Z, and I think I really display those characteristics. Do you have any concerns about those characteristics and how I display them? Um, if not, do you have any hesitations with me moving forward for this role? Um, that will knock a, it's, it's a little brat, it's a little forward, but it'll knock an interviewer off their seat, especially if they really like you, it'll close them right away. If they don't like you and you can't read the room, it'll get really awkward, but if you feel good about it, it's a good risk to take. I agree. I, I was going to say, I think the question around hesitation, any hesitations in hiring me, it's a bold question, but if you're feeling bold and you really want the job, I think opening up the floor to have that conversation is so helpful. Great. What other questions do you guys have too? I mean, we, we wanted to keep this light and short and give you as much time to add, I talk about some challenges or, I mean, to be honest, we really feel for you guys. Not only did you, you miss out on a lot of stuff that's really fun and important, but it's the toughest job market ever to enter in right now. So we want to make sure you feel as prepared as we could help you with right now. And Chris, it is their senior week. So I heard a rumor some of them are still down at the beach celebrating. Keep that on. That might demo, be why right? the cameras are off. <laughs> <laughs> now, any questions about, about the market, about what you're worried about, entering the job force, things that have worked for you, things that maybe haven't? I know somebody said they were in a engineering interviewing like anything else what else are you guys interviewing for right now that's have you gotten interviews have you been able to secure interviews okay Ooh. 
quieter when I run a team meeting. Quiet. Quiet. Okay. There was a question uh, that came through. Within arts there and was marketing. A there we go. Matt, arts there and marketing, or are you trying to do both? Uh, engineering say they want somebody. Yes, there we go. There, there it is. Two to five experience, two to five years of experience, entry level. Um, I would count internships. I mean, that's, that's really frustrating. And I hate job descriptions like that. That's a entry level position, like two years of experience required. Um, you have to, first off, I would email the person directly. And if it's a technical role like that, if you have a portfolio of stuff that you've been working on and you put together your internships, the work that you've done on the side, that might actually suffice for two years of experience. So make sure that you count that um, because you have to go into it that way. Um, human resources, um, human resources is probably a tough industry to tackle right now because of everything, but make sure you focus on a lot of like how the workplace is changing. There's a lot of literature out there about what this is doing right now to how people are looking at modern day workforces. So there's gonna be a lot of change with offices, with, that, with how people work. So if you're looking to human resources, make sure you're up to date with all that stuff because I can honestly see new positions in that field being created after this. Um, focusing on wellness, focusing on employee safety, focusing on how employees are connected with each other remotely. I agree. And I, I think again, like that's where you're going to shine if you can convey adaptability because there will be opportunities for new roles that at the entry level, you can really get a foot in the door. Um, someone did ask a question in the portal we set up about strategies on how to ask about COVID protection and how to ensure, it, it was how to ensure protections, financial and social post pandemic. I think asking about strategies post COVID is completely acceptable. And I think a lot of companies will bring that up um, everyone is trying to figure that out together. No one is by any means an expert, um, but I think it's completely fair to have that conversation. In terms of ensuring protections financially and socially, um, you know, there's just no guarantees anymore. We're talking to a lot of fantastic candidates that you know, felt pretty protective a few weeks ago, right? So I think you have to be open to the unknown there. Um, but a conversation about, about protection is, is completely acceptable. Yeah, I, I, I think if a company's hiring, you have to assume there is a little bit of financial fitness behind their, their mindset of hiring. Um, I, I, you can't keep yourself up at night with, hey, will this company disappear tomorrow? I mean, in the last recession, dating ourselves a little bit. I mean, there were people that worked for big banks and companies like AT&T for 30 years and they were expecting a pension in their next year and all of a sudden were laid off the next day. Um, so, you know, there, there is a, a sense of you, you can't control that no matter what company you work for sometimes. I mean, somebody at Bear Stearns 10 years ago thought they worked for the most secure company in the world and they don't exist anymore. Um, Eric asked too if a internship postgraduate would be frowned upon if somebody's not hiring for full-time work. I would say not at all. Carolyn, do you agree with that, right? I, I completely agree. I, I think, again, if it's a company that you really admire and it's going to get you a foot in the door and it, it's with great mentors, then absolutely. Yeah, in, in internship, if, if I looked at somebody's resume and I was like, oh, what were you doing for the past few months? And you told me, hey, I, I took an internship because there were no jobs when I graduated. I mean, somebody should be pretty cognizant of the, that time in history and they should understand that. Um, and that shows me actually that would separate somebody from the crowd as opposed to the person who looked for a full-time job for six months and sat at home. I agree. Um, so if you could do any type of work, I mean, we are in the digital age where there's places like Upwork, um, and you can gain experience. Um, so if you can do anything to keep your skills sharp and keep working in any way, shape or form, that's always viewed as a positive as opposed to a negative, even if it's not 100% at like the perfect company. Um, and Eric, um, salary, you also asked when is a good time to negotiate salary? Um, as a recruiter, I hate negotiating salary. 
Um, if you get to the point where you're negotiating salary, it means somebody didn't set expectations right at a point in the interview process when they should have been set. Um, it's okay to tr ask about what a compensation package looks like once you get past that first round of interview. Um, a really, really, really good company that has really strong recruiting would talk about compensation in the first round of an interview. Um, and it wouldn't be a negotiation either. It would be, hey, our comp target for this role is 50K. Um, so then when, if somebody turned around on them and said, oh, I'm looking for 55 and they say, hey, from the first round of an interview, we said this role pays 50K, we don't have flexibility on the budget. Candidates should feel like they can do that too. This is what I'm targeting. Um, but realistically, my recommendation is anything that you see online right now from a salary, that information is old. That information from 2019 and the beginning of 2020 was in the hottest job market we've ever seen. We're no longer in that job market. There's 30 million people that are unemployed. So I would say Where make you sure you get your value, but don't, but don't oversell yourself and kick yourself out of a job that you could have got. Agreed. Agreed. I, I think most companies that will happen in the first conversation and you should feel comfortable sharing a range. Um, but also stating that you're flexible for the right opportunity to not eliminate yourself and really gives you the opportunity to get the offer letter in hand to really make an educated decision. Anything else that we can help you guys with? Uh, is everyone using like LinkedIn to apply for jobs, Google, Google jobs, indeed. Aggreg aggregators to like help do all the work. So you're not pinpointing on companies, career sites. LinkedIn and indeed um, use Google too. Um, Google aggregates everything. So if you just type in your, uh, your job type in Google and your area, um, it'll pull you to Google jobs and it's a really good way to apply for jobs too. And for, if I were you and I was on LinkedIn and I saw a company was hiring, I would look to see if there were Fairfield alum there. So you can send them a connection request and a quick message just saying, Hey, I'm an alumni. I'm really interested in this job. A lot of times on the LinkedIn careers page, it will tell you that there's someone that works there that's an alumni. Um, that might give you a better shot of putting your resume to the top of the pile. And always feel free to reach out to people at companies too. Um, I know the rule is to reach out to HR, um, but HR right now probably isn't feeling that, unless the role is in HR, they're not feeling the pain point. Um, for instance, if it's a role in sales right now, the VP of sales is the one with the seat open. They're the one that has like quota that they need somebody in the seat selling right now. They're feeling the pain. So reach out to that VP of sales and say, hey, just to let you know, I applied for this job. I'd love to talk to you more about it. Um, because a lot of the times when you apply to a job, it goes into a black hole with 300 mm -hmm. other applicants. Um, so making yourself stand out by messaging that person that is hiring for that job is most important. Not just the recruiter that's on the job. Right. Same with engineering, right? If it's engineering, it's a VP engineering or even a director level engineering might be responsive. Um, I think the more that you can do to stand out with the company beyond, again, to Chris's point, the black hole, the more you're going to get noticed. And a little bit about us. So just in the wake of, of COVID, we've posted open office hours to help people with their resumes and just give them candid feedback. I believe Kath is posting it or has posted it someplace. Um, but if you just go to our website and go to our blog, you'll find the link to our calendars and we're more than happy to do that for you. Um, and just in terms of just the things that are funny and, and also relevant in terms of prep, we're always posting it on our Instagram. Um, definitely don't be shy. 
it's um, you know, definitely a time that's a little more challenging, but absolutely not impossible. And I think those that put in the time and are creative will stand out. Well, I want to thank you, Carolyn and Chris. This has been fabulous. Good. Um, we really appreciate it. And I know that the students do as well. Um, and I want to remind all of you stags out there that um, the Career Center is open all summer. And just because you're graduating doesn't mean that our services go away. So there are a lot of things that we can continue to assist you with. Um, and also be on the lookout for some uh, additional events that will be occurring uh, during the month of June and probably through the summer. So, you know, don't go away. Keep on top of these things. <laughs> and anyway, definitely guys. check out the Captivate Talent site. Um, and, you know, they've got some great things that they post very funny and um, very informative. And congratulations all of you on your graduation. Um, I, I hope that you're all able to celebrate in your own ways and know that we are cheering you on. And please, please, please guys, feel free that open office hours link is for anyone in any type of job that they're looking for. Anything from resume advice to interview coaching to if you just need somebody to talk to. The whole team's available for it, and it's 100% free. If anyone tries to charge you for that stuff, just come to our site. It's yeah. something we're doing for people that just need help in this time. Okay, so don't don't I'll pay somebody. I'll make sure to, to send out the link after this to all of you in attendance, so that you don't have to go digging for it. Great. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, Go guys. Stag. Cool handshake. Yay. Go Stags. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great okay. information. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you.